Well, good afternoon, folks. Praise the Lord. It's uh, another Friday. The Lord saw it fit for me to have one more chance, amen, to convince you to keep clinging to Calvary, keep clinging to the cross, and, and, and going on with Jesus and being determined not to know anything but Him and what He has done for you at the cross, amen. So I thank God for another chance, another opportunity there you know, I have to say this, it's what a blessing it is and, and an honor it is to be able to be with you tonight and to be able to sit down and open up God's Word and study His Word and to know who He is and what He has done for us and to be fully confident in that. What a blessing that is, amen, just to be able to sit down and have another day to be able to fellowship with uh, God, our Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, the one who loved us and gave himself for us, that we might know him. Amen. Glory to God. What a privilege it is to be able to do that. Amen. So it is another Friday. This is the Friday night Good Fight broadcast. Amen. And I just want you to... Uh, Get your Bibles down, amen, read along with me in scriptures and see that what these things that I'm saying are not so according to as it's written, amen. There's a lot of things that are, are being said in the world today, but none of that's going to profit you anything if it's not pointing you to what Christ has done for you at the cross that you might continue uh, to be established in the faith and continue to go on with Him. That's what God desires for us to know. That's what God desires for us to continually to look to is His finished work. Amen. And if you would, just open up your Bibles to the book of Titus. Amen. I'm going to be in Titus chapter 3. Praise the Lord for each and every one of you that are logged on watching. Amen. Just believe in the Lord to have a good word with uh, every one of us tonight and just encourage us to continue in the faith and just encourage us to continue to take up the cross and not look back. Amen. There's nothing to look back to. Amen. We're looking uh, for those things above, amen, that are seated in heavenly places where we're at, amen, in the sight of and in the mind of God. In Christ, we are there already, amen. It ain't a matter of, uh, uh, you know, me biting my nails and wondering if I've done enough to get there. Let me tell you something. The mere uh, evidence that Christ laid down his life, amen, and... Uh, and, and was crucified for those who would believe, amen. That is enough, amen, to know that uh, my, my key, the keys to the kingdom of heaven are already secured in the hands of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that every principality and power, everything in heaven, on earth, under the earth, all was given to Jesus Christ because he is the one mediator between us and God. Amen. Thank God for that today. Would you just give him thanks tonight that he is the one mediator, that we don't have to go through man, that we don't have to go through anyone but the man, Jesus Christ. Thank God for that. Now, does that mean that I eliminate uh, the, the ministers? Absolutely not. We need ministers of the word to be able to get the word out. Amen. And there's uh, many today that uh, don't even uh, understand. And the reason that they don't understand what uh, who Christ is and what he's done is because they have given their ears to those that they shouldn't have given their ears to in the first place it's you can't take back or or get back what it, it, you know what you've uh heard and and what you've been deceived by in the past all you can do now is repent and turn to the one who is the truth that his light might be shed abroad in your heart now you know that's what's important more than anything right now 
is that you believe now. Amen. You can't get back tomorrow. Tomorrow is gone. You have right now to be able to come to Jesus Christ and what he has done for you on the cross and be made right. Why you still have breath in your body, you still have the opportunity to turn from everything that you've been engulfed with by religion and by the thoughts and the mind of man and you can come and be a part of what Christ has done for you, that you might know him, amen, and live a victorious life, amen, triumphing over sin uh, through what he's done for you at the cross, amen. So, amen, with that said, what a, what a, man, that's, I can't even put words together at how great that that is. That is, uh, it's, it's far beyond my, uh, ability, uh, to be able to tell you how great that is. What a great, uh, gospel we have and a great and glorious savior we have in Christ Jesus. Amen. So if you would open up your books, the Bible, get you a good King James Version Bible down, open it up to the book of Titus. Amen. And I'm going to go right uh, to where the Lord has uh, took me tonight. And it's uh, chi it's uh, Titus chapter 3, verse 8. And it says, in, and, and read yourself, it's written right here in 8. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that you affirm continuously. Now, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Now, there's a lot. I'm going to just take a time, take a little bit of time right here with just this one scripture. There is a lot of meat right here in this one scripture. And, and I'm going to do my very, I'm going to just do the best that I can with the help of the Holy Spirit, which is the only way it can be done. Amen. It's by him leading and guiding it to show you in these scriptures, in this scripture alone, what the Lord is telling us, uh, how we should operate right here, right off the bat. He says these things. He says, I will that you affirm, affirm. The word affirm goes far more than just declaring or just speaking. To affirm something, that means there's evidence that there's experiences, faith, and a lifestyle. All this plays a part, amen. Not just declaring, but constantly a lifestyle, one living constantly affirming what they have in Christ Jesus, and it will be seen. There will be fruit seen. This is why Paul would go, Paul addressing Titus in this letter to Titus and the church. He's writing to us all here. He said that they which have believed in God, those, and, and we know that according to Scripture, no man can believe in God but by coming to Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross. No man, I don't care if he says he believes in God or not, if you have not come to the place where you are united with Christ by faith in his death, you cannot believe in God. You may say you believe in God. You may confess that you believe in God. But according to as it's written, no man can come unto the Father but by me, Jesus Christ. Not me, Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus was the one who showed up preaching that exclusive message. He was preaching the cross while going to the cross, but he didn't need the cross. He was appointed to go to the cross, 
But let me tell you something. His faith was in the Father. It was not in the cross. His faith was in the Father. Amen. We are the one who has to have faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God that God uh, sent his only beloved son to come into the world. Hallelujah. That we might, amen, be partakers of the heavenly. Amen. That's the only way one can be. Uh, partakers of the heavenly. Amen. You can't be partakers of the heavenly just because you go down uh, to the local Baptist church and, and get dipped in the water tank. You know, you, you can't be uh, part uh, partakers of the heavenly by going down and, and, sh and signing up uh, to the uh, Catholic Church and 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 quoting their creeds and being sprinkled by their uh, ministers or whatever else they got going on in the church. Let me tell you something, sir. The only way that one is right with a thrice holy God is faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, the cross. There you have become, amen, a new creation. Old things has passed away, glory to God, and all things have been made new in Christ Jesus. That is the place where God is desiring that every man, woman, and child right now, today, right here, right now, to be. That's the place. And be careful that you might be careful to maintain good works. Now, I understand that good works could resort to some things that we do if we're led by the Spirit. And I'm not trying to, uh, you know, come against any of those things as uh, long as they are led of the Lord. Amen. But the, I want to take this down to a spiritual, uh, what is being said here spiritually, maintaining good works. Maintaining good works is you keeping faith anchored at Calvary that the gospel might continue to go forth. Because the Bible says what is in the treasure, what's in your heart, ultimately where your treasure is, is where your heart is. And those that are not preaching Christ and him crucified exclusively, we, uh, we know by their speech that their heart is really not in uh, the, what Christ has done. They have not received a new heart. They are going, they think they're going on to bigger and better things, but I got news for you. They have become, they have become unprofitable unto man. And we're going to learn that right here, right here in these scriptures. Amen. So Paul is telling Titus, maintain good works, keep faith in the cross, endure the afflictions for the sake of Christ, and keep faith where God is well pleased, amen. These things are good and they are profitable unto man. These things, well, these things that God is doing and has done through Jesus Christ and is continuously delivering us over to the death that the life of Christ might be made manifest in our mortal body. But Paul would go on and warn. Listen to what Paul, Paul warned Titus in verse 9. Listen to what he said. He said, but, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies, and contentions, and striving about the law. For they are unprofitable and vain. That's what Paul said, avoid these things. Not only avoid these, not only avoid these questions, but Paul even nailed it down. He got it, he even, he went in deeper than just, hey, avoid the, when he said avoid these things, it also means avoid the men who bring these things, amen. It wasn't just him avoiding uh, the, the, the so-called acts, but the men that bring these things, because he said in verse 10, 
a man who is an heretic. Amen. This is a man who a heretic is a man who is preaching something contrary than the sound doctrine which is in the Bible, Christ and Him crucified which is the only sound doctrine that God uh, desires that all men everywhere affirm continuously. This is what God desires, amen. And it says, after the first and second admonition, this means the first and second warning, he says, reject. Paul said this to Titus. He said, after you have warned this person, after you have warned this man, after the first and the second time you have warned him, reject them. Now, to reject them means to just simply, you got to turn them over to the Lord. You cannot continue to give your ears to those that you know are going contrary than to what is being taught in the word of God through Christ and him crucified. If you do, my friend, you will wind up becoming unfruitful and unbearing. Amen. But if you will, if you will come to Christ, if you will come to him, let him do the work that he desires to do in you. Oh, there is a sweet smelling aroma and a sweet victory coming your way. Amen. Paul also said that in, in the beginning of chapter three to Titus, he said, put them in, he said, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers. To be ready, to be, to be ready to every good work, to speak no evil, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawler, but gentle, showing all meekness and all unto all men. For you, it says, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. We we were disobedient. We were deceived. Stry, it says, serving divers lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Now, this is what the man whose faith is not in Christ, this is the fruits of that man. This is the fruit of all men who haven't been born again. Amen. But the, the Bible says right here, Titus is talking again, uh, Paul is uh, talking to Titus once again right here in verse uh, chapter 3, verse 4. He says, but after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward men appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. It says, but according to to his mercy, which saved us by the washing of regeneration and the, and renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he has shed, listen to this, which he has shed on us abundantly. It wasn't just one dose of the Holy Ghost. It wasn't just one dose. Let me tell you, the Bible says that w with his kindness and love that he showed us through Christ and him crucified and our heart being baptized by believing this gospel with, a, with our heart, the Bible says that he has done this abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. He's done this abundantly. There will be fruit, amen, in that heart of the believer. If that believer will continue to deny self and take up the cross and follow Jesus and give his ears not to those foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and striving about the law, which are unprofitable and vain. Not giving his ear to the heretic, amen. There is great uh, victory to come your way, amen, if you keep the faith. If, if you look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of 
our faith. Amen. The Bible tells us the other, the other night, we, we were sitting in the, in the living room and, and we got the children's Bibles down and we started reading. And I went over and we started reading out of the book of Judges in the children's Bible. And the Lord, man, I tell you what, the Lord really began to show me some things right over in the book of Jude. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me over to the book of Jude. This is what is so great about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, what he done for us by the laying down of his life that we might receive righteousness. Amen. Listen, to what it says over here in, in the book of Judges. Judges, amen, chapter 14, starting in verse 5. I'm going to read a little bit right here, and we'll just break and just uh, explain it as we as I go, amen. And it says, it says then when uh, Samson, it says, then went Samson down from his father and his mother. Now, this is in the book of Judges, chapter 14, starting in verse 5. It says, to Tenaeth, and came to the vineyard of Timaeth. Timnaeth, amen. Now, when I read that, when I read, and he came to the vineyard, the vineyards of Timaeth, that automatically takes me to the place where he is fruit bearing, amen, because that vineyard, uh, that vineyard is a place of fruit bearing, amen, so we know that he went to the right place, amen, listen to what it says, and, and I'm going to continue to read, and behold, a young lion, now this is just like the enemy, this is just like the enemy. When you come toward the cross, when you get your eyes fixed on, on Calvary, listen, the enemy is going to start roaring, amen. He's going to start getting loud. He's going to start trying to disrupt. He's going to try to do all he can do to get you distracted. This is what he does, amen. And, and, and let me tell you something. If he's not doing that in your life, you need to question if you're saved or not. Because if you're saved, he's going to start meddling, amen. But if you ain't, he ain't got no reason to meddle with you because he already got you, amen? So, let's continue to read. And it says, And behold, after Samson left his mother, and you know, down from his mother and his father to Timnaeth, it says, And came to the vineyard of Timnaeth, and behold, a young lion roared against him. Just like old Satan, ain't he? Soon as you get your eyes fixed on the cross, you get saved, man, you, and you, and you're starting to walk in victory. You're starting to live, uh, that life, that new created life. Amen. Here comes the enemy roaring. Amen. But let me tell you something. Hallelujah. Hey, the lie, the, the, the mouth of the lion has been shut. Amen. Glory be to God. The line of the mouth, the Lord, listen, the mouth of the lion has been shut. Glory to God. It has been closed. It's been shut up. Up. It's been destroyed, amen, through what Christ has done at the cross, amen. I just can't get enough of this. It says, and a young lion roared against him. In verse 6, it says, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson, amen. It says, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid, speaking of a small lamb, and it says, and he had nothing in his hand. So we know that it wasn't the work of man who done anything, because the Bible says that Samson didn't have anything in his hand. He didn't lift a tool. He didn't lift nothing. It was all done through God, amen, through what Christ done at the cross. Oh, glory to God. You need to see this, amen. And it says, and it says he done, he had nothing in his hand. He says, but he told, it says, but he told not his father and his mother what he had done. He didn't tell them that he had killed a lion. He didn't say anything about it. He just, he just went on. And it says, and when he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well, amen. And it says, and after a time, he returned to talk to take her, and he turned aside and see the 
carcass of the lion. He looked at the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and a honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hand and went to eating. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, when the enemy comes in like a flood, let me tell you something. The cross not only slew the lion, not only put him down, but he, listen, he gave you a place. Oh, that, 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 that the sweet swelling aroma of victory begins that you can eat. Amen. He have given you a place, amen, that the lion is no longer roaring, amen, but he made a dung hill out of him, and in that in that place, he put honey in the lion, amen, that you could eat, amen. Whoa, oh, hallelujah. And the Bible says, in, in, in the next continuous reading, it says, and he took thereof of his hands, and he went eating, and came to his father and mother, and he gave them, and they did eat. Oh, this is what the cross does, my friend. Not only does it feed you, but it feeds those around you. If you will take it up, and begin to walk in the victory that Christ died to give you, not only will you be eating of the lamb, but others, amen, will be able to partake of it. Others will be able to come in and, and, and to know this great gospel. Hallelujah. What a gospel this is to be able to know that Jesus has conquered every enemy. He has conquered every uh Anything that would come against the child of God has been defeated at Calvary, amen. And what a great, uh, what a great and glorious gospel this is. And it's not just uh, uh, words. Listen, the, there, this was manifested. It was manifested in the life of Christ and it, it, all the miracles that he done. Everything that he had ever conquered in his life was a representation of what he would do when he would go to the cross and defeat every principality and power and wickedness in high places. Everything that condemns and, 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 and distracts the heart of man. Christ come to deliver you from those things and begin to create in you a new heart that you, my friend, can be established in the place where you can walk in victory. Amen. But you can't walk in victory within your own power. You can't walk in victory just because you go to church every Sunday. You can't walk in beast in victory because you fast or because you pray or because you do all these things that you think are good works. The good works that the Bible talks about is that good work that Christ has done at the cross. He is the one who has done the work that we enter in. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, uh, listen to what he says here in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, amen. If you got your Bible, run right, just flip over there. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Listen to what Paul said here in the book of Romans. He says, I beseech you, therefore. This means Paul said that I urgently entreat you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It says, and be not conformed. To the world, to this world, it says, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? That is the cross whereby you have been crucified 
Because you can't have the cross and your life too. You cannot take up the cross and continue to live the life that you desire to live. It has to be one or the other. You can't maintain your life, when I say your life, your ambitions, what you see fit. Now, if you take up the cross, you have been crucified from that, my friend. You've been crucified from what you want to do, and you are now in Christ. You, he has bought you with a price. You are not yours anymore, my friend. And that's Christianity according to Scripture, according to as it's written. For the Bible tells us in whom, and this is Colossians chapter 1, verse, 12, verse 14. Now let's, now let's go up. Uh, Let's back up to verse 12. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. It says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You know, you know, you don't have to sing that song, you know, I'm not a saint anymore. You know, I, I'm not a saint. Listen, if you're in Christ, you're a saint. You know, you are a saint. A saint is not someone who is ordained of a Catholic church, my friend. A saint is a child of God who has been born, uh, who has been uh, born again through the blood of Jesus Christ. That, my friend, is a saint. One who is born again and keeps his faith in the place where he was born again. And he does not move that faith and into something else. Amen. He keeps it where God gave it to him. Amen. And then verse 13 says, Who has delivered us from the powers of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. This is the place. Amen. This is the place it, that God has put you. He has put you into the kingdom of his dear son. The cross is what done that, my friend. Nothing you done, done that. It doesn't, I don't care what type of works you've done here on this world, in this world, how many trips you made to Africa, how many trips you made to Australia. It doesn't matter uh, what, uh, I mean, they matter, but what I'm saying, none of that's going to inherit you into the kingdom of his dear son. The cross the cross and the cross alone is the place where we, amen, are partakers and are inheritance and have been translated, amen, into the kingdom of his dear son. In verse 14, Colossians 1 and 14, in whom, in whom, and that whom is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We have redemption through His blood. Even forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Amen. It, it says, For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. They were, it's all because of Christ and him crucified. Nothing else. It was created by him. And for him, every man, woman, and child that's ever been created, you have been created for him, to serve him. Now, he's not going to fringe on your free will. You have a choice tonight. You have a choice today to make a choice whether you will serve Christ sincerely from the heart, obeying that form of doctrine from the heart, you can either obey this form of doctrine, coming to Christ, 
turning from sin, repenting from everything that has ever uh, caused you to be distracted, that's caused even your own heart will cause you to do that, my friend. The, Paul said it to Titus, we were deceived, amen. Paul said it, he was deceived. He was deceived by the Jews' religion. <laughs> Many today are deceived by some form of, 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 of teaching that they have heard from a minister that was very cunning and crafty, amen, that was very well-spoken, one that was very uh, uh, good with uh, twisting and enticing uh, the scriptures to be uh, turned into something that they shouldn't be, amen. But Paul said, he says in verse 17, this is Colossians 1 and 17. He says, no, let me, I'm going to go on. No, I'm going to stay at 17. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. Amen. And he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. He was the first one who come up, he was the first one that was raised from the dead, amen. He was the first one from the dead. That means he was the only one that could have made a, he was the only man that could have made a sacrifice and the death grave not hold him, amen. He was the first one from the dead. It says that in all things he might have the preeminence. Glory to God. And he desires that you put him first before all things, amen. He wants your preeminence. He he has uh, preeminence uh, of those who would go to Calvary. And that's where he desires for you to be. In verse 20 in Colossians 1, it says this, And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him. I say, Paul is saying this to the church, he says, I say whether they be things in earth or things it says, things in earth are things in heaven. And you who were sometimes alienated and enemies in your own minds by wicked works, by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Hallelujah. And that you can be in the sight of God. But it comes with a condition, my friend. It comes that it comes with a condition. And that condition is that if you continue in the faith, amen. You have to be in the faith. You don't get these benefits. And you don't get what God has promised by not staying in the faith whereby he has made the covenant that you might be the recipient of these promises and benefits. Amen. You, It's just like me going to the bank and trying to get a loan. I can't get a loan. If I get a loan, uh, let, me, let me get away from that stuff. Then. You can't be a partaker of the benefits unless you come to Calvary. You cannot. You can, the only way one can be a recipient and take up the benefits of God is to deny self and take up the cross and follow after Jesus Christ. This is where God is may it has 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 took in Jesus Christ crucified him that the spirit might always deliver us to that death that the fruit and the lifestyle of Christ would be always manifest in the child of God for we know within ourselves there is no good thing the bible tells us in romans chapter 3 verse 10 it says as it is written 
Now, we need to know what is written, amen. It says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. It says, there is none who understands. There is none who seek after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all, it says, they are together become unprofitable. There is none who do good, no, not one. Not one. But there is one, and it's not of men. Even though he come as the as the form of a man, he came in flesh, amen. There was one who would go to the cross, amen. There would be one, and his name is Jesus. And what he done by the laying down of his life, amen, to make you heirs. And to make you heirs of God, to bring many sons unto the Father. Hallelujah. That's good news, amen. That's good news. But all this is conditioned on you keeping the faith. What faith? What? There's only one faith. Let's not get it uh, twisted here, okay? There's not many different faiths. You can't believe the way you want to, and I believe the way I want to, and God just, uh, just, uh, vastly cover everybody's, uh, faith because they want to believe that way. Listen, son, listen, people. He, God does not work that way. God has only one way that He works. And that is, He works in truth. Amen. For the word of the Lord is right. And all his works are done in truth. Amen. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Now, the, now, the life that I live in this flesh. Now, the life that I live. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, the, the, the condition is this, church and saints and men, all those that would listen and give an ear to this truth tonight. It says, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away for the hope of the gospel, which you have heard. Tonight, you're hearing it, my friend. You're without an excuse Every time you log on to uh, to Facebook and, and there is a minister there that is telling you that the only place that God is working is through what Christ has done, His Son has done, where He loved you and gave Himself for you. That's the place where you can be established in the faith. That Listen, you're going to be without an excuse, my friend, because the moment you hear this truth and it comes through these earlobes and it hits that brain, you're, 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 you're marked. You're marked. You've heard. Now it's up to you whether you hear to continue to believe this gospel of Christ and Him crucified. Listen, no, no, no one is going to be able to escape what is to come before the Father without being in Christ Jesus every moment. Amen. Every moment. Every second, every hour, listen, your faith must rest entirely and solely on the finished work of Jesus Christ. If your faith is in anything else, let me say this, my friend, you need to know this and you need to hear this. If your faith is in anything other than what Christ, that means it's not in Christ and what he done. If it's in works, you are no longer justified and you're no longer in the faith. 
The only place that you can receive the promises and the benefits of God is being in the faith. And that is being in Christ Jesus. And we are in Christ Jesus because we're baptized into his death, not baptized in water baptized into his death. That means you have believed from the heart this form of doctrine which was delivered unto you and now being made free. Amen. I like free. I lived a life of bondage for 35 years. Free is, uh, is something that I love dear, but I know that freedom is is not predicated on me. It's not predicated on a 12-step program. And I tell people all the time, it doesn't matter how clean you have been months after months after months if you haven't been delivered just because you stay clean because they lock you away and you can't get access to the stuff doesn't mean you're clean here. It needs to be here that you've been cleansed, amen. The renewing of the mind and the heart has been changed, amen. You can't get clean by anything you do. I don't care what Teen Challenge says. I don't care what AA says. You can sit around a bunch of drunks that used to drink and used to be dope addicts and confess that to one another all you want, but that's not going to bring freedom into your life. That's not going to bring grace into your life. The only thing that's going to bring grace and freedom, the true grace, is your faith being in in Christ and Him crucified, whereby you have heard what Christ has done for you. Amen. The Bible tells us in Titus 2.11, it says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Sir, ma'am, tonight the grace of God is appearing to you. What will you do with the grace of God that is appearing tonight? And that is appearing because Christ and Him crucified is being presented. That's the only place that grace appears. Hallelujah. It don't appear anywhere else. It only appears when Christ is being lifted up. Amen. That's the place where grace appears. And when grace appears, what does grace do? Does grace give you a, a license to continue to drink and do stupid things and continue to just live the lifestyle that you desire to live? Absolutely not. The grace of God appears unto all men teaching us. What does it teach us? It teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. I don't know what that was. Praise the Lord. Just believing. What does it say? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. This is the place where God wants you to be delivered. And yes, I understand that there are going to be things in us that has to be brought out. And God will continue to do that so long as we hang, so long as we keep faith in Christ and Him crucified. The Lord will continuously be getting, uh, cultivating our heart, getting things out of our heart. We will not ever arrive to that place we, uh, uh, until we get to where Jesus is, amen. When you get to the cross, the help will come. When you get your eyes and your ears and your life and everything focused on what Christ did for you at the cross, the help will begin. And it will begin to work in you mightily, amen. And it will begin to teach you to deny these things that you once thought you needed, amen. I, I mean, I never, I never, ever thought that I would see the day that I would be free from speed. I never thought I would see the day that I would be freed from some of the things that were reigning in my life. But now, in Christ Jesus, He has made me free. And what a life that is. 
What a life of peace that surpasses all understanding through what Christ did at the cross. Oh, there's honey in the line, amen. Oh, there's honey, glory to God, a sweet smelling aroma unto God when one would come to the place where the, where the lion has been slain, amen, where the enemy's mouth has been shut. You no longer have to give in to those things, my friend. You can be delivered from them. And I'm asking tonight that you would take hold of what you've heard tonight and consider this gospel of Christ and Him crucified and continuously maintain this faith until the day in the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what he desires. Amen. That's what he wants in your life. Is for you to continue in this faith. For the hope of the gospel. And be not moved away. Amen. Don't let men, heretics and all these other things. Come into your life and cause you to be discouraged. Look unto Jesus today. What he has done for you. The Bible says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. That means he gave it and he will keep it if we'll keep him. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you tonight. And I'm just asking you tonight if you uh, don't have a church in your region and you live in the Delta right here. That there is a cross preaching Bible believing church in this region. Thank God for it. And we welcome you to come and be a part of what God's doing in this region. There ain't many churches out there that's preaching Christ crucified anymore. There are a lot of religious organizations and denominations and different things like that. But when men come to the place where the sacrifice is being offered, amen. The lamb slain, amen. Christ and him crucified. The place where God uh, desires you to be and where God desires uh to work in your heart and, and to shed uh, abroad this abundant grace that Christ died to give us. It's a good gospel, amen, and it's a good life in Christ Jesus. We will suffer some things, amen. We will suffer persecutions. We'll suffer lies and all these things, but I take them, amen, with pleasure because I'm going to tell you one sweet day, we all, those that are in the faith, are going to see this Jesus, amen. We're going to see him just as he is, amen. We're going to be able to put our hands in his hands. We're going to see those puncture wounds. And we're going to glorify him even greater, hallelujah. And I just ask, Lord, if he's pressed on your heart tonight to turn to him, I'm asking you, just go to him. Repent of everything that you've done. Repent of every way that you've looked. And go to him. And I can promise you today, that he will receive you, he will crucify you with him, and he will create in you a new man, amen. He will give you that peace that surpasses all understanding. Join us Sunday morning, amen, 10 o'clock. If you can't drive in, uh, join us on Facebook at Pastor Wayne's Vault, Wayne Boss's, uh, you, you just, Wayne Boss, uh, Type in that on YouTube and you can see it. Or you can go to my website, my page, a Facebook page, and uh, I, I download everything we do right there as well. And we also have a YouTube page if you want to hear more preaching of Christ and Him crucified. You can go to our website page, which is uh, the Evangelist page on YouTube. Type that in the search engines and it'll pull you right up to all the great teachings and preachings of Christ and Him crucified. And what a growing experience and a learning experience it'll be for you as it convicts and as it convinces you to be more determined not to know anything but Christ and Him crucified. I love each and every one of you. God bless you all. If the Lord sees it fit for Friday, next Friday, I will be back. Uh, continuing to encourage you to keep the faith and encouraging you to take up the cross and continue on with Jesus Christ. Love each and every one of you. God bless you. Love you all.